Welcome to another Goonj Lockdown podcast. This is our second episode in a series of shows that we're doing uh, while we're all hunkered down in our respective homes trying to uh, beat uh, the pandemic that is on the loose uh, across the world. Um, joining us on uh, this podcast, which is going to be a, a slightly more economically um, related uh, or economic related podcast. Uh, I have uh, uh, Whistling Woods Vice President and um, uh, Chief Technology Officer, as well as resident know it all uh, Chaitanya Chinjlekar. Chaitanya, can you hear us? Yes, I can. And thank you for the know it all. Excellent. Uh, and we've also got uh, Whistling Woods Advertising Faculty from the School of Media and Communications. Uh, um, Minakshi CV. Minakshi was um, or has been um, uh, an advertising professional for many, many years. Um, and uh, uh, now she's turned uh, uh, an entrepreneur in her own right. Uh, Minakshi, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Rahul. We also have uh, Siddharth Roy joining us. Siddharth is a final year uh, School of Media and Communication student finishing his BBA at Whistling Woods. Siddharth, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Excellent. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Goonj is uh, Whistling Woods' podcast series. We do fiction and nonfiction podcasts uh, on many, many topics. And if you are interested in hearing what we have to offer, because we've got some amazing podcasts uh, up, uh, just go to goonjpodcast.com. Um, or you can now search for us on Spotify. That is Goonj on Spotify. Um, so, uh, coming to our podcast today, uh, as I said, it's uh, a podcast about um, the economic impact of uh, the COVID-19 spread, um, and that economic impact is uh, both short-term as well as long-term. Uh, COVID-19, uh, in an unprecedented way, I suppose, has, has shut down um, uh, all activity across the globe, or pretty much across the globe. Um, there are very few countries that are, are unaffected by it. And, uh, um, you know, uh, many, many commentators are, are talking about uh, the economic effects, the lasting economic effects that this uh, shutdown is going to have. So uh, if I come to CC for a minute, are we, are we definitely heading towards a global recession post-COVID-19? Yeah, well, uh, recession is defined as, I think, three straight quarters of economic degrowth. So, yeah, I would assume so. Um, I think it will be varied in uh, different countries. It will be varied based on uh, how much domestic consumption exists versus how globalized a country is. But yes, I think we are definitely in for um, at least six to nine months of uh, we're basically in a really, really big hole, and now we have to slowly, slowly start climbing out. Okay, and um, you know, the, I suppose the question here is is that a, a lot of governments. I mean, you know, uh, if you look at America, if you look at the UK, um, uh, and you know, I, I don't want to get into politics for a minute, so we leave politics out of this. But um, a lot of um, uh, you know, America, uh, Brazil, for instance, is another country. Um, that have uh, are trying to strike this balance. I mean, you know, lots of other countries, uh, India, for instance, have, have completely quarantined, completely shut down. There are many other countries that have have done that, but there are some countries like America, like the UK, um, who have been a little bit cautious in terms of how they are shutting the country down in an in an in an attempt, I think, to try and balance. Um, the battle against uh, the the pandemic versus the, the 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 issues to the economy in the long run. I mean, what should governments be doing in this situation, Minakshi? I think it's better to uh, you know err on the side of being uh, super cautious, like I think how India is doing, because mm. uh, in the sense that you know if you're not going to be careful and you're going to take that chance, I think the recovery period will become too much longer. So. From where China started to where they are, it's almost four, four, four odd months. So if that's an example to go by and if lessons have been learned, then it's probably wiser for you to, you know, pretty much uh, be in the lockdown state that we are in so that the recovery period then becomes 
you know, shorter. So everybody is going to have a long road to recovery. But I think that if you going to be far more cautious and you will learn lessons from the other countries who probably were not, um, you know, they were not as proactive as. I'm not sure we were proactive enough, but I think the fact that we decided we're going to take this hard call of you know shutting stuff down, um, that may just prove us, uh, you know, because our healthcare system is also not in as great space as a lot of the other countries. So I think that yes, it's a it's a very hard call for a government to take, uh, but maybe it's a good one right now to say that you know let's let's just shut shop, recover, and then uh, you know we'll all be healthy and the nation will probably have a better chance at. Uh, recouping and uh, on a better and faster route to recovery. Um, so moving on from a sort of a, a, a global and an industry-wide uh, conversation, um, let's have a look at the, the media and entertainment sector, um, which obviously has been uh, badly impacted in the last uh, uh, three weeks uh, or so from, from this, um, like most other industries. Um, but what are the lasting impacts that are going to be but, there on the M&E uh, sector? Rahul, actually, has yeah. it? Has the M&E actually sector been badly impacted or it's been impacted by 10-15%? Well, I think it, it's been pretty badly impacted, CC. I think it depends on which part of the M&E yeah, sector Yeah, exactly. You're so about. if you look at Z5, has had a 60% increase in subscriptions in the last three weeks. No, no, 60%. I agree. I, I, and, and, and I think that's, so, that's what we we need to caveat this. That, that, correct. That there will, be, there will be gains and there will be losses. But losses. So I think the biggest, the two biggest areas of loss for the art industry, one is that there is no physical production happening. And number two is that the multiplexes are really getting battered, the, the, the multiplex company. Right? Not just not, not just that, but I mean, just all outdoor, um, all uh, outdoor, sort of activity, yeah. live entertainment, you know, all of yeah. that kind of stuff. All of it is gone. Events, I mean, you know. exhibitions, um, all that is, is is badly impacted. But according to me, the bigger impact is that there is no physical production happening. Because yeah, if you if if physical production was happening, you could monetize that physical production on other platforms. And not necessarily only on the big screen, right? So the film industry is about ten percent of the Indian media and entertainment industry, and sixty uh, percent of that is the domestic box office. So actually, if you look at it, the the Indian domestic box office is only six percent of the Indian media and entertainment industry. So yes, six percent hit is a big hit, but if you if the, if people were able to at least produce and monetize that content on other platforms. So maybe OTT or television uh, with, uh, you know, people paying VOD or with people uh, paying by subscription, they would have been able to offset some of that. The problem is there is no production. And because there is no production, you know, everybody is screwed. Yeah, and, and Minakshi, from, you know, obviously not just OTTs, but obviously viewing of, of television has gone up significantly uh, in the last three weeks since... Everything has been shut down. People don't have very much else to do except sit, sit in front of the television and, and watch it. Um, what do you think from an advertising perspective? Because one of the things that I have heard is, is that, oh, you know what, so many more eyeballs on television. Surely advertising um, will have benefited from this or at least advertising on television. I mean, is that a, a realistic, uh, 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 you know, hope? So, uh, Rao, it seems like that because, um, you know, like I was sharing with you the bark um, report for the last, the COVID week, unfortunately, what that's what it's called now. Um, strangely, the, the role of television also somewhere is uh, the importance that television was given. That role seems to be coming to the fore. So, one of the mm. statistics I read that is um, Mr. Modi's uh, speech, both those speeches that he made, the viewership was higher than even IPL. So that's right. a significant, significant number. Um, the number of people watching television non-prime uh, uh, non time has gone up. Uh, so you'd be surprised to know that news uh, viewership has gone up, obviously, because they are looking for credible and authentic news and therefore they're coming back to television because clearly we now understand that the news on social media is not wetted. So that whole, uh, you know, the... Trist that we always had about 
credibility of news i think that bit is now getting heightened by the situation so people are coming back to television because um, another thing i don't know if it happened to you but in a lot of uh, large complexes uh, people have stopped reading print so newspapers are being stopped yes i think the other thing that we are starting to also see now is this massive uh, explosion in uh, tiktok and uh, zoom and video conferencing and video calling apps and that ecosystem yes i think we've added uh, 16 million or 17 million tiktok users yeah, just in the month million. of march just in the month of march yes that's crazy so and 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 that that sort of comes to my to my to my next question um which is you know given all of this change we we've, we've spoken all about all of the things that that have happened which is essentially uh, a move i i think away from um traditional to to non traditional or to sort of online um in terms of of our entertainment and 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 a lot of our daily lives um, after the the pandemic is over um you know if it's if it's a, i mean once it's not a pandemic anymore um what are some of the lasting um effects of it going to be i mean you know when actually you talk about the fact that uh, television is is um you know reaping almost the benefits of the fact that we're all stuck indoors and and, and we aren't aren't able to go out and and kids are home and stuff like that is that something that that television is likely to hold on to in some way shape or form um you know this this binge watching of of digital that's happening is that something that they're going to hold on to um what 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 is the new normal that this pandemic is going to leave behind so i'm going to uh, so there's going to be some people who take this as a change of lifestyle and continue to kind of operate uh, in this way forever even when even after this has become normal so they will still prefer to watch content at home rather than go out uh, they will a lot of people will prefer to work out of home unless they have to go to office uh, a lot of offices will start to react uh, to that uh, maybe they will give up some of their uh, real estate uh, space and save on rental costs and allow more people to work from home uh so i think some of them uh, for them it will become a more permanent uh, uh kind of not permanent but semi permanent change to their life and i think some people will come will uh, will completely uh, boomerang back where uh, for the next i don't know whenever this thing is opened up for the next 3 months they'll try to spend as much time as possible outside the house just because they've missed it so much and you know they will go to see every single film they'll go to wait go to watch plays they'll run they'll i don't know head out go to parks or whatever so i think it'll it'll go two ways and is little difficult to know which type of personality will uh, or you know which kind of people will choose what but i see two pretty contradictory or pretty opposite uh, reactions happening long term binakshi so to your question about you know the whole thing that tv is enjoying right now is it be permanent uh, i suspect not i think it it probably something that they'll enjoy till the time that everything comes back to normal um, in terms of um, what cc said yeah, i agree you know i mean when we are affected we go two ways either we become very cautious and say for me for example the personal thing is a rupee uh, saved is a rupee earned so suddenly we are wondering that when we don't go out we are saving so much of money so that's probably one of the things that people would consider saying that you know do everything at home why should i go out and spend so the for example tourism i suspect that industry will take a hit for a while at least for 6 to 8 months things become normal but another industry that i see that can really capitalize on this is healthcare right because uh, the uh, health insurance is the category is very uh, it's very it's not people don't buy health insurance as often as they should so there are something industries which will uh, probably really do well after this and there will be some industries which obviously will take a beating so eating out etc i think will still be people will uh, be cautious at least till the end of the year people will be careful about you know spending money outside as often as they used to uh, but in terms of the media uh, specifically i think tv may not enjoy this for as long um 
print and radio i'm thinking are the i would be curious to watch what happens to them because print i think the behavior is changing uh, i think books will make a slight comeback okay physical or in book physical or digital physical digital both Hmm. Okay. Why? Why do you think? Because that? people will get used to. It. I mean, how much TV are you going to watch? How much are you going to sit in front of a screen? Eventually, your eyes will start hurting, right? You need to do something to kind of pass your time. How much TikTok are you going to watch, right? Suddenly, you've gone from, you know, uh, all your travel time is cut out. All your uh, outside the off outside the house uh, chill time with friends or with colleagues is cut out. uh all your uh, you know all your uh, uh, all the time that you would spend at work not actually working but doing other things is gone you're filling all this up with you can't fill all this up with content or with sitting in front of some screen so yeah. you will want to watch some natural uh, you know something to see naturally right sure people will start reading i have a feeling people will start reading again and it's a boon because you know what some of our millennials and gen z could use a lot more reading um last question then um very quickly um uh what are the signs of hope that we see emerging are, are there any silver linings for you guys that that you're that you're seeing i think social media use will go down people will actually want to physically spend more time with friends and associates um i think you will see a, a like a, a like you know those that that part of life will will change i have a feeling yeah so so what i feel is like now we see the creative sides of the students of various people as well which were always overburdened by the materialistic all the capitalist world but i also see a huge boost in the entrepreneurial activities after everything is settled down okay all right um i i certainly think that um one of the things that i think will be is a silver lining is is that um i think this whole work from home experiment i think hopefully it'll pay off really really well and i think that um people will have more flexible timing i think um hopefully uh people will stop relying on um you know just face time as a as a way to measure people's efficiency or their productivity and i think that if work from home can become more acceptable um right. i think that uh, the the benefit of that is in a number of ways that all of you have touched upon in terms of entrepreneurial activity will probably go up the environment the value for the environment will probably go up and we will be able to value our human relationships outside of the work uh environment more strongly as well so i i'm really keeping my fingers crossed for the fact that uh this um work from home massive work from home experiment uh that we've all been going through for the last sort of couple of weeks um you know uh goes off very well and becomes more more acceptable i think society um will benefit greatly from from something like that but thank you again and uh, if you've enjoyed this content uh, please log on to www.bujpodcast.com or again you can find us on spotify so thank you very much and stay safe <laughs>